how it started, how it's going. Let's talk about Netflix. Hey guys, this is Neon, this is Clownfish TV, and this is uh, very bad news for Netflix. Uh, remember how they were gonna go all in on video games? Remember that? They were gonna go all in on video games. That's how Netflix was gonna win the streaming wars, by going in to the video game business, right? Uh, not a good idea. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's playing out just the way that most people thought it was going to, except it's worse. Uh, less than 1% of Netflix subscribers are playing video games. It's gotten so bad that Kotaku is trying to get people to play video games on Netflix, and uh, they're just not having it. People don't subscribe to Netflix to play games, especially games that you can you know play on any mobile device, uh, on Steam or wherever. Uh, even though the games they have are pretty good, again, uh, Netflix, this is not your forte. This is not your thing, not your strength. And uh, with them cutting back on expenses, I have to think that they're gonna uh, reevaluate this uh, video game disaster. So let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 274,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. We do talk about the video game industry somewhat. Uh, we've been talking a lot about Netflix, and um, yeah, this is bad, guys. This is this is dire. Less than one percent of Netflix's subscribers want to play mobile games as of a day or two ago. This is coming from TechCrunch. We got Wired's take on nobody's playing their games. New findings show 99% of subscribers don't even know the streaming giant has video games. I didn't even know they launched it yet. They made a huge, huge deal about it last year um, and the year before. I think they were talking about getting into it, but Netflix keeps playing games, spoiler alert. It's going to win. Netflix is going to win video games, guys. Yeah, it's not going very well. In fact, um, you know, it, it looks like it mo might go the uh, the way of Stadia, which is supposedly rumored to be shut down by the end of summer. Again, Google, uh, this is not your forte. Video games are not your forte. So stay out of it. So this is coming from TechCrunch. Uh, Netflix is struggling to keep consumers subscribed to its streaming service. Uh, the mobile game venture is looking like a flop. CNBC reports that according to app analytics company Aptopia, Netflix games have been downloaded 23.3 million times in total. And on average, there are 1.7 million daily users. This means fewer than 1% of the streaming giant subscriber base, around 221 million subs, are interested in Netflix video games. Netflix told TechCrunch it doesn't disclose the number of players. However, the Aptopia report can shed light on just how unpopular its gaming offering is. In comparison, leading mobile games like Subway Surfers, Roblox, and Among Us uh, each have more than 100 million downloads per Aptopia. Netflix has a long way to go before it can reach this level of popularity. Uh, Netflix recently lost nearly 1 million subscribers, so it's not hard to see why the company wants to invest in more games. Netflix games launched in 2021. Did they? Did they promote it? I knew they were talking about it. I didn't even know it launched yet. And currently offers more than 25 games, only 25 games, 25 games through the Netflix mobile app. The company intends to double its catalog by the end of 2022 and release over 50 games. Wow. While Netflix hasn't disclosed how much it's spending to develop its mobile game division, the company has acquired three game studios, Boss Fight Entertainment, Night School Studio, and Next Games. As TechCrunch has previously reported, the Next Games acquisition cost the streamer $72 million. $72 million, nobody's playing these damn games. In July, Netflix announced three new games, including award-winning titles, Into the Breach, and Before Your Eyes, I've never played it. Its catalog also includes a variety of games connected to popular Netflix shows like Stranger Things, Queen's Gambit, Shadow and Bone, and Too Hot to Handle. If Netflix continues exploring leveraging its own IP for new games, that approach could draw more subscribers. Uh, shows that have been out for a while don't have a solid fan base and don't have a solid fan base probably won't do as well as games based on hot series like Stranger Things. Um, with season 4 of Stranger Things premiered the two Netflix games based on the show. Stranger Things 1984 and Stranger Things 3, the game, saw a bump in downloads. Just a little bump. To play a Netflix mobile game, subscribers can find them free in the streaming app in the dedicated games row. I, I didn't even know they launched it. I knew they were talking about it. I didn't even know they launched it. Players are then redirected to download a separate app for each game. That's effing stupid. 
That's really freaking stupid. Once downloaded, only Netflix subscribers can play the games. Yeah, it's way too complicated. It really is. Um, according to Wired, part of their problem for Netflix is awareness. Despite acquiring outfits like Oxen Free Creator, Night School Studio, and Dungeon Boss developer Boss Fight Entertainment, the company's investment into games doesn't show in the way it markets and promotes them. I didn't even know they were, I didn't even know they were live yet. I mean, there are sites publishing articles telling you how to find how to find games, how to play games from your Netflix account. Nobody, Kotaku, how to actually play Netflix's surprisingly terrific games. They have Moonlighter. Moonlighter is actually really good. Uh, nobody knows how to find the damn games. God, it, I almost. I almost feel like they don't really care at this point. I think they're cutting so many things. I think they're probably looking at this like, yeah, a game thing that's not working out either. We're just going to, we're just going to shut that down, man. Ads, ads, ads everywhere. It would be easy to say the streaming giant isn't gaining gamers because their offerings are bad, Uh, but they're not. No, they're not. Exploding kittens, the stranger things games are okay. Netflix did not respond to requests for comments about Atopia's finding or findings or its handling of current titles. I think they're going to, I think they're going to cut this loose or something. They got to do something. You can't, that's stupid. You have to dig to find the games and then you have to download a separate app. They could just have, and and that's what I thought they were going to do is just have an app that just plays games or just be able to play the games through your Netflix account on your TV with your remote or something. That's freaking stupid. Even Amazon before they had their, whatever the, what's the thing called Luna or whatever it's called. Their new gaming service, you could actually download games on your Prime um, Fire Stick, right? And you could play them with your remote or you could, you know, pair up a, a Bluetooth controller and it played just fine. And it was like right there on your homepage. You know, if you got like Sonic the Hedgehog or whatever, they didn't have a whole lot of games out. Most of them were like mobile trash, but, but, uh, you know, at least you could find them. It's Netflix. It sounds like you can't find them. Um, so then we'll, uh, we'll run this by you too while we're at it. Since we're talking about failed gaming platforms, uh, Mike Phelan put an article up a couple of weeks ago uh, talking about Google shutting down Stadia. Remember that? The streaming gaming service that was supposed to be a console killer? Yeah, that didn't work out very well either. Uh, to no one's surprise, rumors that Google intends to shut down Stadia have once again risen. However, this time the news supposedly comes from an insider on the Stadia team killed by Google's Twitter account posted a message from an alleged possibly former Google employee regarding what he, she was told about a recent employee retail seminar. If legit, it would appear Google will sunset Stadia at the end of the summer. Now they've done this before. They've tried to compete in markets that they're not very good at competing in. They tried to compete with Facebook with Google Plus, and they sunsetted, sunsetted that. And uh, I'm sorry, video games are out of their, out of their uh, wheelhouse. So here's what was actually said. Just a heads up, old coworker and friend of mine is now one of the regional managers for Google. He's actually the one who got me started with Stadia. They had a pretty large employee retail seminar in California this past weekend. Long story short, Google is beginning their exit plan. Tax write-off. Uh, They did not have an exact date. Um, The end of the service will happen, but they did say by the end of summer. He also mentioned they will not be transferring their services or servers to any other competition. Uh, So it's going to be like they did with Google Play Music. Same exit approach and strategy. I forgot they even had that. Obviously, I'm not as big a fan as some of you, but you guys have always been super cool and helpful. Uh, There were a few other details I could post if you'd like, but nothing too groundbreaking. I do believe he also mentioned that all members would be informed 30 to 60 days before that the last month of service would be refunded and no charge for usage. Yeah, that was a flop too. Um, Community prediction. This is, again, this is a, a couple weeks ago, but community prediction. 750 people have predicted stay will die around September 16th, 2022. Well, F, help us predict when the stadia will die. Yeah, going into another quarter, right? Just it's stupid. Why do these companies get into video games? They don't know what they're doing, right? They don't know what they're doing. I mean, this happened in the 80s, too. We had everybody getting into video games, everybody trying to build computers that could play games. Um, we went to PowerCon over the weekend, and they had a seminar talking about sectars, which were made by ColecoVision or Coleco, right? And they had success with the ColecoVision 
and uh, they decided they were going to build the Atom computers, and the Atom computers basically bankrupted Coleco, which uh, led to the end of Sectars prematurely, because I guess Sectars were selling very, very well, but because Coleco decided to, you know, Icarus itself building computers, and they had no knowledge of how to build computers, and it went very, very badly, that that was the end of the company. And, uh, you know, Netflix at this point, they're cutting back. I do not see them continuing to do, you know, gaming if nobody's going to play the damn thing. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.